Hello everyone and welcome back to the garage and I hope you all notice the flag is the right way up now. A lot of people commented on that so I thought it's finally time to flip it the correct way up and by a lot of people I mean two people but that's a lot for me so thank you. Anyway today we're going to replace the front wheel bearings on the Daytona, put some new discs on it and that's it. It's going to be a quick and short video so let's get straight into it. So before I begin I'm sure a lot of you will notice the overspray on the tire. The owner has resprayed these wheels, so there is a bit of overspray, but he will clean that later. So in order to remove these bearings, I wanted to use my blind bearing puller, but sadly I don't have a size that fits, so I'll have to do it the old school way and hammer them out. So I'm just going to place it on a couple of blocks of wood to space it out from the table and to give the bearings some room to pop out. And first thing I'm going to do is extract the seals, because one of them is hiding a circlip. This is the bigger seal of the two, and behind it we have the disc that's driving the speedometer. And this is the small seal, and after I pop the seal out, we're gonna see the circlip that's hiding behind it. So let's pull that out real quick, and knock these bearings out. I tried warming the rim up first, being careful not to damage the paint, then I used a drift, admittedly an undersized drift for the job, but it's all I had, and tried to knock these bearings out, but there's a sleeve in there that I just couldn't move out of the way, so after a lot of attempts and a lot of tapping and hammering, I just could not get them out, or expose a big enough edge to be able to hammer against it properly, so I had to resort to more destructive methods. So I've decided I need to break one of the bearings to be able to finish this job. So I'm just popping the bearing seal out. And I'm just going to use a small pointy drift and break the bearing cage in a few places. And then I'm just going to grab a pair of pliers and pull one side of the bearing cage out. So the aim of all this was to move all the ball bearings to one side and pull the inner race out. So I tried with a pair of pliers first, but that wasn't enough. They're quite well pressed in there, and there isn't enough room. So I grabbed the socket instead, pulled the wheel upright, and I'm just gonna hammer it down. And as you can see, that created a bit more space, and I'm really close to popping the top ball out. And once that's out, that's it, we're home free. And that's it, it's all apart. Now I can take the spacer between the two bearings out completely and that allows me to grab a socket and extension and be able to hammer the bottom bearing properly. And there we go, it wasn't so stuck after all. Now to get the remaining bearing race out I need to put the bearing back together so I have something to hit against. So I'm just going to use four balls and space them evenly, and that should be enough. And there we go, the second bearing is out, and the hard part is done. I'm just going to clean everything as good as I can, ready for reassembly. And here we go, the new bearings are finally going in. I'm just going to put a thin smear of grease on the outside of the bearing to keep corrosion away and also to aid assembly. And I'm just going to use a bearing and seal driver tool to drive it in. I'm just driving it gently now to make sure it's not going in on the piss. And 
and we're done with this one. We can switch over to the other side, put the bearing spacer in and drive in the second bearing. So the first part of the bar is slightly oversized so that helps me align the bearing better and now I can just drive it in the rest of the way. Just make sure the bearing driver is just a tiny bit smaller than the bearing but still big enough to cover most of the outer race. And that's it, it's all the way home. Now we can reinstall the circlip. And pop the new seal in place. Now again I'm going to cover the seal in grease. And I'm actually going to pack the underside of the seal with some grease. So it's got a bit more in there to fill the gap. And this seal goes in by hand almost all the way. So I'm just going to give it a couple of taps to make sure it's flush. And we can flip it over to the other side. Don't forget to refit the disc for driving the speedometer. And again, grease the seal and pop it in. And I nearly forgot to grease the actual lip of the seal, which is the most important bit. This one's not so easy to press in by hand. I'm just going to drive it home slowly, making sure it stays level. And that's it, we're done with the bearings. Now we can move on to the discs. So before I install the new discs, I'm just going to carefully run a tap through all the holes to clean up the threads. You can get corrosion in them, you'll probably have some thread locker left in there, and now after the rims have been resprayed, you'll probably have some paint in as well. And if the threads aren't clean, it's very likely the thread locker on the new bolts won't bond them in properly, and also if you torque them to the correct spec, it's likely you won't actually get the required clamp force from them, because it's just harder to run the screw through a dirty thread. And there we go, we've got a bit of paint, a bit of swarf, and a lot of thread locker. So let's do this to all of them, then blow the threads with compressed air. And here's the new brake disc. It's not an expensive branded one, but it should still do the job fine. And it actually looks pretty good, it's decent quality. Now ideally you'd want to renew the bolts every time you change the brake disc. But I didn't have any in this case, so I'll have to reuse the old ones. And I'm just cleaning the threads with a wire brush to get all the old thread locker out. Applying some fresh Loctite. Running the bolts down to stay some time. And now torquing them to the correct spec. And do the same thing to the other side real quick, and we're done with this job. And that's it, the front wheel is all done and ready to go back in the bike. And in the next video, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start reassembling the front end. So thanks for watching, and see you next time. Cheers.